Greetings and welcome to this martial arts assassin guide. So I want to go over the skills, the attributes and the gear and maybe gear choices that you can make throughout your playthrough of the martial arts assassin. And uh, let's get right to it. As for the build, you want to invest 20 hard points into Fist of Fire, 20 hard points into Claws of Thunder, 20 hard points into Blades of Ice, which are all synergies for Phoenix Strike, where you also put 20 hard points, and these will be your main charge-up skills. Um, also, you want a finisher, and for that I put in one point into each of them. There's a bit of flexibility, you can use Dragon Talon to release more charges at once, or Dragon Tail, for example, to release one charge at once. There's also the opportunity to use Dragon Claw, which releases two charges at once, because it strikes with both your claws if you're using dual claw setup. Dragon Flight is very nice, it also releases one charge, but it's mostly used for traversal or repositioning your Merc. As for the rest of your points, um, as you notice, we already used 80 of our points, which is something that is around level, I don't know, 75 if you have some skill quests or 70. Um, the rest you put one point in the claw mastery, one point burst of speed, one point in weapon block, and then basically you finish with the core build. All the rest of your points you can either put in claw mastery, you can put it into venom, you can put it into shadow master, you can even put it into death sentry. That's that's up to you. I personally like claw mastery because it boosts up the attack rating even more. It gives a little damage boost to the melee attacks, but mostly I want the attack rating, so I'm able to hit the monsters. If you're not hitting the monsters with your charge up skills, you don't get any charges, so this is pretty important. As for the trap tree, I don't put points anywhere, but you could theoretically go to death sentry if you want it. As for the gear and stat distribution of this build, um, as always, or as oftentimes as you want to put enough strength to equip your gear, you want to put enough dexterity to equip your gear, unless you go with a shield claw or shield weapon build, then you might want to go for max block and the rest into vitality. Notice that we have a lot of points here in strength that are not really needed. This is not an optimized attribute distribution. This is just for showing what I can equip and I wanted to show different sets of armor that have different requirements and also not all come plus to strength. As for your gear, this is leaning more towards a magic find setup, but in general you want to look out for plus to skills, plus to martial arts, you want to look out for attack rating, attack rating bonus, lifesteal per hit, all resistances is very important, and maybe even magic find. As you can see, a Bartrux is the optimal weapon for this build, because it has all that good stuff, it has also faster hit recovery, it also has plus to strength, plus dexterity, which helps in equipping our gear. And in this case, I socketed it with an Istrun to get the magic find, plus 30%. For the helmet, I went with the Shaco, because it also has all the stats that we need, plus the skills, life, mana, magic find. You could also socket it with a perfect topaz, of course, then it's 1% magic find less. You can socket it with um, a gem rune also to get it cannot be frozen, which at this equipment we get it from the raven frost. Um, but if you have a gem rune lying around and you want to socket your your uh, shaker with it, then it's fine as well. But raven frost also gives, gives dexterity and attack rating, which is a very nice bonus. The amulet, um, something with plus skills again, maybe life storm per hit, mana storm per hit, life, resistances, 
be very nice. It's either something like that, a crafted one, or you can, if you want, also go with a Maras, um, which has all the stats that we want. In my offhand, I also have a Bartrox with an East. For the armor, I have Chains of Honor, because again, it has all the good stuff. It has plus to all skills, lifestyle and hit, it has plus strength, it has all res plus 65, it has a damage reduction by 8% and also 25% MF. So this is really, in my opinion, the best armor that can build for this build. Uh, there is an argument for Enigma, of course, as always, if you want that teleport, but then you have to get the 65 resistances from somewhere else, which can be a bit challenging. Here are um, War Traveler boots, because uh, this is the MF variant and I uh, like the plus magic find, but you can also run with something else like Aldor's, like Shadow Dancers if you want, um, or any rare magic boots with faster run, with resistances, with vitality, all that good stuff. The second ring might surprise you because it's not very often used, but I was lacking mana leech, so I went with the Manalt and I didn't have a crafted ring on hand, so the crafted or a, a crafted ring with resistances maybe and plus life and mana leech would be a bit better, but this just shows that you need some source of mana leech in this build. Um, for the belt, I went with the gold wrap on Magic Find gear, which is pretty decent. Um, you can go with Arachnid Smash, also for example, which has plus one skills, or with uh, Verdango or with String of Ears. Um, it's really up to you and what uh, stats you are still need or missing. The gloves are plus two martial arts, 20 eyes. But you don't need the attack speed, the increased attack speed. We have enough plus skills that our burst of speed takes care of that. So you can easily look for something cheaper, but the important part is the plus two martial arts because we want to bump up our skills. The best stat that we can have is plus two martial arts or plus two assassin skills. So these or something similar are very, very nice. For the inventory, of course, martial arts skillers, a geet for the magic find, any small charms with resistances, magic find um, are good. Also, you can run a chain talon for your second weapon if you want, because it has up to 50 resistances, it has up per 15 mana stone per hit, and you can also exchange the mana out maybe for an eagle or anything else that boosts some of the important stats that you want to have. can also be a, a BK ring or a Stone of Jordan. And on the weapon slot, of course, we have CTA and Spirit. That's it uh, for the main gear. Now I want to show you some alternative gear. Like for the body armor, we talked about Enigma. Of course, it's very, very strong and it has that sweet, sweet teleport that if you combine it with like Arachnid Smash, you, you also get some faster cast rate. You also could have faster cast rate on your amulet. You could faster cast rate on your ring if you don't use the Manalt, for example. There are very, very many options and it's very flexible. That's why I like this build so much. Uh, you can be very flexible. But if you're looking for something more budget, you can go with a Kui Haggins, for example. and put an Amrun in it for the resistances. You can go with a Viper Magi. You can go with a Duress. It also has resistances and fast hit recovery, which is very nice. You could also go with Natalia's, which does not have the plus skills that we need, but it has three open sockets, which you can maybe socket Istruns like here and run the whole set, which gives you, I think, plus three to skills. So uh, there are many different options and also batch budget variants, which are very nice. For the uh, helmet, the high end would be Griffins or Endarils, but hold on, <laughs> they are not that strong in this build. So Griffins only works with the minus two enemy lightning resistance. The plus two damage does not work with, uh, for example, Phoenix Strike. 
and it only has plus one to skills but if you want to teleport fast around you can also use this setup with enigma but for max damage uh, and more magic find i really recommend the shaker it has all that we need and is a lot cheaper uh, for Andera's Visage, it's very nice because it has 2 plus 2 to skills, it has poison resist, it has plus 2 strength, which again lowers um, the hard points that we need to invest in our strength attributes. It has increased attack speed, which we again don't really need because we will have a high burst of speed. But it's a nice uh, option. I think it is a bit more expensive than Sheiko, so I would still go with the Shaco because it's just so good. For budget you can also run a uh, lore. It's a good budget um, option. It has plus one to skills, it has some lightning resist, it's mana after each kill, so till you get something better, like something crafted, like two to assassin skills, faster run walk, resistances, something like that, then um, lore is a pretty good option. And of course you want a torch and an any in your inventory. I forgot that before. It's always nice to have. And for amulets, I also already talked about the Maras. Um, whenever I can find it, here it is. Very strong choice, of course. But you can also run something like Cat's Eye, Metal Grid. Uh, I'm not a fan of both because they lack plus two skills. Um, so it's maybe high lots is a bit better. Uh, maybe Atmos for the bonus to attack rating if you're struggling with that. And But I would rather have like a plus three to martial arts, blue amulet or even plus two and some other stats than some of these. Now also two other rings that I want to show you. The BK ring I already mentioned is very good choice and this is a GG dual lead ring as you can see um, something like that it does not have to be that insane but it's a nice option also here's an Natalia Sam it only makes sense if you run the whole set because the base stats are not that good aside from the all res and maybe the decks um, but I wouldn't run it by itself over something like lower unless you really, really need the all resistances. In that case, go for it. And that basically covers most of it. Um, if you want to run a shield, there are different options from Rhyme for the cannot be frozen. If you're not having a Raven Frost, and I really recommend that maybe if you are starting out and it's early in the sea in the ladder you can run something like this it's very very budget um what other ring just get rid of this ring and maybe some blood fists so even if you don't have like the buttocks but buttocks pretty cheap um, you could go if you're starting out on ladder with the new rune but pattern for a start because it's also a bonus to attack rating and some decent stats it just needs three sockets and uh, i think three really cheap rune runes um, or you go with the jade tail and so this is a very basic setup for the most part the double hasarus gives you uh, 10 to attack rating per character level, which is pretty nice. Um, you could also run angelic combo. But as I mentioned before, um, like the rhyme is very important for the cannot be frozen. It also gives you plus 25 all res. Um, so think about these uh, stats when you're building your character. If you have, for example, the Raven Frost and you want to mix it up, you can also go with the Vis and Scarred, which is a high chance to block. If you want to go for max block, you can also take the Mosas, which is pretty nice uh, in blocking and it has two sockets or up to two sockets. The higher value variant would be uh, Storm Shield. Um, with that, you're 
uh, basically or borderline indestructible yourself and I recommend this for any hardcore players out there. It's also Phoenix which on paper sounds nice because it gives minus enemy fire resistance which boosts up your meteor but for the price I can't recommend it over like Storm Shield if you're just looking for that survivability or even a second Bartox if you're not looking for survivability but for more damage because Phoenix does not give plus skills and I can imagine the minus two resistance being that strong over plus three two skills. Yeah, that uh, basically covers what I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions, feel free to write down in the comments below and see you next time. Bye.